Um, today we have our last lecture uh, where we talk about um, one of the specific type of generative model, which is called generative adversarial network. Uh, so far in this course, we talked only about uh, classification problems and uh, just a bit about the regression problem. Those are kind of uh, machine learning problems or methods that are called supervised. And uh, the basic characteristic of the supervised methods that for each data point in uh, our data set, we have associated features and labels. So for the classification problems, we have uh, labels that are of categorical nature. Uh, for example, for binary classification problem, we have a classification to uh, dog images or cat images. Then we have multi-class classification where uh, there are more than two categories or classes. And there is also a multi-label classification where each data point can belong to more than one uh, category or class. And for regression problem, uh, the predicted labels can be uh, of the, uh, they are real valued, so from minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, those who have been uh, on our other course, machine learning with Python, also know that there are, there are unsupervised machine learning methods, for example, uh, as clustering and dimensionality reduction. For the clustering, um, we have a data set without any labels, and we want to find some groups or uh, sub, uh, subgroups uh, within the data set, which are gonna be divided or grouped um, based on some uh, notion of the similarity between the data points. And uh, mentionality reduction is happening when we have um, uh, data with uh, high dimensionality, and we want to uh, reduce dimensionality of this data in order to be able to either, for example, uh, visualize the data. So in this case, we want to reduce dimensionality of the data to, for example, 2D or 3D, so we can plot some sort of images or uh, graphs of the data. And also maybe sometimes we want to reduce the dimensionality of the data uh, for, uh, before we feed it to some other machine learning methods. So we want to just uh, get rid of uh, correlated features and only get most important features of the data set. So um, as I said, basically what we've been doing so far, we've been uh, getting some uh, data set. Uh, for example, in this case, there is an image and we feed this uh, data set or data points to the artificial neural network. And we ask to predict the label, either categorical label or real uh, valid label. Um, today, we're gonna discuss different kind of uh, network where we want to teach the neural network to produce the data uh, that we want to. For example, uh, if we have a uh, images of the dogs in our training set or the target set, we want to teach the network to produce this kind of images. And this is the types of the model that are called generative models because they are uh, generating data samples. Uh, there are many different uh, ways to, um, uh, to produce the uh, samples, or there are many kinds of generative models in machine learning and in deep learning. Uh, but today we're going to discuss only uh, generative adversarial networks or GANs. And uh, the GANs has been inspired by the uh, principle from the game theory, which is called zero sum game. And uh, in this slide, uh, it's kind of a simple illustration of what is the zero sum game. So you can imagine that there is a game with two players, uh, player number one and player number two. And this uh, blue and green uh, circles represents the event space for the player number one and two. So uh, 
they represent what objectives or the goals of each player. So for the non-zero sum game, uh, there is an exist situation when the both players can win. So there is a win-win situation. For the zero sum game, uh, there is no such situation exist. If the player one uh, wins the game, it means automatically that the player two lost. And vice versa, if the player two uh, wins the game, then the player one automatically uh, lost. So how this principle of uh, zero sum game can be used to uh, create a model uh, which will generate the data. So imagine a game where we have two players and one of the players is the generator or artist and another player is the discriminator or critic. So um, in the first uh, rounds, in the beginning of the game, uh, the generator produces some kind of uh, samples and these samples are not very good. They usually some uh, some kind of noise or they are very random. And we also have uh, our target sample that we want to produce. We take these uh, very noisy generated samples and we take these uh, target samples from the training set and we feed it to the discriminator. The only uh, thing that discriminator do is to uh, classify these samples as fake or real. So in this case, the fake uh, samples means the samples produced by the generator or artist. And the real samples are the samples from the training set or the uh, target set. So in the beginning of the game, because the generator is so bad, uh, it's very easy for the discriminator to uh, recognize the fake samples. So uh, in this case, the discriminator wins and the generator lose. After each round, both players get the feedback. So if the, uh, if the generator uh, lost the round, it gets some sort of uh, feedback that helps to improve the generated uh, output. So after a few rounds, the generator uh, becomes uh, better at producing the samples. And now these samples are very uh, similar to the training set or our target, target set. And now discriminator is uh, kind of confused because these samples looks like real and it makes a mistake and uh, classifies these fake images or fake samples as uh, real. So in this round, the discriminator lost and the artist won. And again, the discriminator also gets some feedback that helps to uh, improve in the next round. So this game consists of uh, iterations or the rounds where uh, these both players compete against each other and they are getting better and better with each round. And um, we're gonna talk a bit uh, more about the implementation of this uh, uh, model uh, in the TensorFlow. Uh, but first I want to show some examples of the uh, produced, produced data from this kind of um, network that compete, compete against each other. And uh, this is our uh, samples from the original paper where this kind of network has been proposed in 2014, the paper called uh, Generative Adversarial Nets. So you can see that um, those are uh, produced samples uh, trained and the network was trained on the MNIST data set. And actually the output is very good. Uh, you can recognize the digits. Then there's also uh, generated faces from this kind of network. And um, some faces are quite realistic, some are not. So the result is uh, a bit worse than for MNIST data. And below um, there are samples um, 
generated from a CIFAR data set. So this is data set with uh, 1000 categories of different kind of object and animals. And as you can see, the results are not very impressive. So this first original network wasn't very good for generating the, uh, this kind of data. Uh, sin since the 2014, since the publishing this uh, first uh, network, the GANS has progressed quite uh, rapidly. And now there are um, a lot of different kind of um, generative models that are based on GAN, but they are like are improved versions. And within each year, these uh, GAN models uh, produce uh, the more realistic uh, images or fake images. Uh, here we can see examples of images of human faces. And you can see that the progress is indeed very uh, visible. And just for fun, we can just see um, uh, the generated images. Uh, this website call, calls uh, this person doesn't exist.com. And as you can see, this image is generated by a gun and specifically by style gun two. And if you refresh page each time, you will get uh, an image of the, like a fake person, uh, which doesn't exist. There is also a version for the cats and for the horses. And if you check the version for the cats, um, it's quite reasonable, it's not perfect. It's a bit worse than uh, the uh, generator for the human faces, but it's still quite reasonable. Uh, the generator for the horses is not very good. Uh, you can easily see that it's, um, the proportions are not very realistic uh, from time to time. For example, here it's visibly fake image. But in general, it performs well, very well, especially if it's uh, trained on a specific domain. Um, these networks can produce not only images, but also um, audio signals or any kind of data that you want to. You will have uh, more examples in the notebook. Uh, here we have examples um, of a bit more complicated um, gun. It's called cycle gun. It consists of uh, not just two players, two networks, but uh, additional uh, players or networks. And the idea here is to convert input image to the uh, associated output image, for example, uh, with the change pattern. So here we transform the horse to the zebra. It's not perfect. You can see that there is still some uh, patches uh, that are not covered by the pattern, but in generally, it's uh, it looks quite quite okay. Um, it's not working uh, perfect all the time. It depends what kind of input samples you have. For example, here, uh, the network, the generator. Uh, applied this zebra pattern, not only to the horse, but also to the human and also to the uh, rocks in the background. So it depends what kind of input you are using. So those have been just uh, uh, fun applications of the guns. And now let's uh, see how we can actually implement these networks in the TensorFlow Keras. So what we're gonna do, we first uh, create a random vector or it's also called Latin vector. Uh, so basically how it's created uh, is uh, you just sample uh, all the values of the vector from the normal distribution. In, in this sense, it, that's why it's called random because we are sam sampling from the distribution. We take this uh, random vector and we feed it to the generator network. Uh, let's imagine that it's just a simple uh, feed forward densely connected network. The generator then outputs 
um, the generated samples, which are then fed to the discriminator together with uh, samples from the training set. Then the role of the discriminator just to classify the samples as fake or real. As you can imagine, this is pretty easy to implement in uh, Keras. First, we decide uh, what is the size of the random vector. Uh, here, we decide that it's uh, 100. Then we have to decide what is the uh, shape of the output sample for the generator. And then we can just stack dense layers. And the last uh, dense layer of the generator should have this uh, uh, shape of the generated uh, data point. Uh, discriminator is also can be just a stack of dense layers, but the last dense layer should be uh, for the classification, for the binary classification. So we have just one uh, unit, one neuron with the sigmoid activation, which will return to us the probability of the sample being fake uh, or real. So uh, the more um, difficult question is how to train this kind of network, because we have uh, two networks which are competing against each other. So they have opposite objectives. So we uh, do the training in two stages or two phases. Uh, in the phase one, we train discriminator. So um, first we, uh, build uh, or we sample a random vector. We feed it to the first artificial neural network, the generator. The generator produced some sort of uh, output, uh, the generated samples. Uh, in the beginning, it's going to be uh, some noisy uh, sample. And we also have a training sample or target sample, and we feed it to the discriminator. The discriminator classifies uh, the samples to fake and real and returns the probabilities. And given our true labels, uh, we compute uh, the loss and the error, and we uh, propagate this error to discriminator by using just normal uh, backpropagation step. And then uh, we tune the weights of the discriminator uh, in a such way that it classifies uh, better these uh, real samples as real and fake samples as fake. Uh, in the phase two, we train the generator. We again sample from the normal distribution. Uh, we create the random vector, feed it to the generator network, uh, create fake samples. Uh, but here we have to use uh, a bit of a kind of a trick because we want to fool the discriminator into labeling the fake samples as real. We assign uh, the labels uh, for the fake samples uh, the same as like real. So it's the opposite from the previous step. Then we feed these fake samples with the switched label to the discriminator and again, get the probabilities, compute the loss, and then propagate um, the error, but now to the generator. So we don't touch the weights uh, of the discriminator. We only adjust the weights uh, of the generator. So if the discriminator uh, classifies the fake uh, samples as fake, then the generator is going to be penalized. Um, and if you want to understand a bit more how this process is going, you maybe want to take a look at the, uh, at the algorithm uh, from the original paper that is in the notebook. But you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like uh, know these formulas or understand it. Uh, during the training, we will be just gonna using the normal uh, binary cross entropy that we used before. But the basic idea that we can, uh, by using the appropriate labeling for the uh, fake and real samples, uh, we can uh, write this 
loss function and we can minimize this binary cross entropy and we can get the same formulation uh, of the loss that was in the original paper. So it looks a bit different, but uh, in reality, these are uh, the same, the similar formulations. So in this case, uh, the, the uh, objective goal for the discriminators is increase the probability put on the real data and decrease the probability that are put on the fake data. Uh, in the case of generator, uh, the, uh, the objective is the opposite. For the generator, the generator wants to put more uh, probability on the fake data. And again, we just need to provide appropriate labeling. We need to uh, assign uh, the label Y1 for the fake samples in order to get this uh, uh, sort of a similar formulation that was in the original paper. Uh, how to do it with the TensorFlow Keras? First, uh, we combine these both nets, the generator and the discriminator in one model. And uh, I will explain why we need to do that for what purposes and later. Then we compile first the discriminator uh, network just with the binary uh, cross entropy and some optimizer. It doesn't matter what kind of optimizer. And then we compile the GAN. So uh, before compiling the GAN, this uh, model that consists of the two nets, we need to set uh, uh, discriminator trainable files in order to fix the weights of the discriminator. We need to do that uh, for the uh, for the generator training, this uh, phase two step. And again, we just use normal uh, binary cross entropy in some optimizer. Because this is a bit more complex um, model than we used to use before, uh, we need to write our own custom training function. And um, we provide this uh, GAN model, the combined uh, model of these two nets, our data set, batch size, coding size, number of epochs. And uh, for each batch in our original training set, we perform these two phases. The phase one is uh, training the discriminator. So first uh, we uh, sample from the normal distribution by TF random normal. Uh, and we need to provide the input shape, our batch size and the codec size that we set, uh, in this case 100. And thus we formulate this uh, render or latent vector, which we call noise. Uh, we feed this noise to the uh, generator and the generator produces these fake samples. Uh, then we just uh, combine these fake and real samples uh, in one batch by using uh, concatenation. And then we need to uh, create appropriate labels for the fake and the real samples. We will set uh, y equals one for the real samples and y equals zero to the fake samples. And then instead of uh, using the feed function, we use train on batch function. Uh, this function uh, or method is used when you do just one single uh, gradient step. And we feed this uh, um, batch with our created labels uh, to the discriminator. And by that, we uh, compute the loss, we back propagate uh, the error, and we adjust the weights only of discriminator. In phase two, we uh, train only the generator. And uh, in this phase, we will need our, uh, this GAN model that we created. First, we uh, again, create a random or Latin vector from the normal distribution. And then we feed it to um, uh, the GAN model. Uh, and in this case, you should know that the labels are switch. So, uh, for the uh, for the fake labels uh, for the fake images, we set the label uh, one, and then we uh, feed this 
noise vector and uh, labels to the GAN model. And when we apply the train on batch function on the GAN model, we um, again perform the single gradient update. But because previously we said the discriminator trainable false, it means that only uh, the weights of the generator are going to be adjusted, but the weights of the discriminator are going to be uh, fixed and unaltered. So in this case, we just need this gun model to separate these uh, two phases of the training. 